formal one actually at the Lightbox office pre-COVID. So that was uh, February 2020. And uh, that's why it's even more meaningful that we're all back together here today. It's a, it's a cause that we're committed to and that we intend to build uh, going forward with our partners. So without further ado, let me welcome Lizzie Chapman, founder of Zest Money, which is a very powerful uh, company in the fintech space. Anjali Singh, who is the head of the Wiki Banking Council and also MD at Deutsche Bank. Sid Talwar, co-founder and partner at Lightbox and the VC that you need to know. And, <laughs> and Ahana yeah. Gautam, who is also the co-founder of Open Secrets. And it's really amazing that we have this panel with us today because each one is going to share some remarkable insights. The whole idea is to have a very open conversation understand what female founders are looking for, where the challenges are, and how the ecosystem can help. We would love to have your questions as and when through the conversation at the end, so don't hesitate at all, because uh, this is a safe space and, and we can be open about everything. So let's dive in. I want to start off by getting Lizzie to share her story. I mean, Lizzie, uh, Zest Money has just raised 50 million, right? And uh, that's a remarkable story and in fact she tells us about her first round and she was actually having her baby at the time. So from, <laughs> from you know, a period where you're struggling to figure it all out to making it to the next level and then the next. Lizzie, tell us how it was. So at T we've raised I think 130 million US dollars in total over like ABC rounds um, and touch wood it hasn't been too painful. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually normally one of these people that's the annoying face of like females getting funded because I think that we have to believe that it's not such a massive problem in our industry and then we can make more capital come towards us. But I would say, um, look, it's been, it's been a hard struggle, but I think it is for every founder. And having a baby and starting a company at the same time has its pluses and minuses. Um, the pluses, you become incredibly disciplined about your time. And I think that's made me run the business better because we don't waste time. We're very thoughtful about how we allocate capital and time and resources. Um, I think it's made me really like value, you know, what I do every day because it gives me a break from being a mum. Um, <laughs> so you put your whole self into like either yeah. or of those two things. Um, but yeah, it's definitely brought its own unique challenges. So I'd say that if you can choose not to combine them exactly at the same time, that's probably a good thing. Um, but, but at the same time, I wouldn't have done it any other way. And I think we wouldn't be as successful in building our company and growing the way we have if yeah. we hadn't had those kind of challenges. Okay. Can everyone hear clearly? Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Anna, let me get your story because you have a different story altogether, and and this is the thing, you know, everyone has a unique journey, and it's really about how some of these forces come together. You started off in a smaller town in India. Today, yeah. you've also completed a fresh round of fundraising this yeah. year. Yeah. Tell us what your journey was like. Of course, I think uh, first I'll start with why I started Open Secret. I think as a as I'm building a purpose-driven brand, every single thing starts with a why. And the why of Open Secret goes back to my own childhood. I grew up in a, in a really small city in Rajasthan called Bharatpur. I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with that city. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the couple of experiences uh, that I had as a kid which stayed with me. First, I would say I was raised by a working mother. She single-handedly raised me in Bharatpur. I remember coming back from school would open all the junk food which was available in the kitchen and I'm not exaggerating when I say I was 3x my current size <laughs> and then of course the weight and that experience continued with me the second thing I would say the experience which really stayed with me was I, I mean Rajasthan is a state which has the lowest female literacy rate right I was very fortunate that I was I had a mother who was a role model who was inspiring me to go after the best in class education but to be very honest in that part of the country not all girls were hearing the same thing. Families were aspiring for best in class education for their sons but when it comes to their daughter they were like yeah just get educated but you have to settle down and I of course had my mother as a great example and I think that from the very beginning I knew that I have to do something about it as much as I can. 
So giving back and doing something for women, and that's why Abha, like what you are building, is so close to my heart because I personally first had experienced it. After that, went to IIT Bombay was a complete transformational experience. Like coming from a small city, you don't know what to wear, what to talk. Forget English, you don't even know how to talk, right? Amazing transformational experience. I I fell in love with I would say theater. Like I started, I had done plays in Prithvi Theater as well, and I was also part of the entrepreneurship cell at IIT Bombay, and that was my first time interacting with investors and founders as well. And I fell in love with the consumer goods space because I thought brands have a story to tell and they touch and improve the lives of millions of people. So that's how my journey with consumer brands began. Joined Procter and Gamble, worked there for four years, and then went to Harvard Business School. I knew I wanted to build something in consumer, but what exactly was when I was studying in Boston? You know, when I went to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, these are like retail stores in US. You see an aisle full of healthy and tasty snacks. And we talk about all the development that is happening in India, but and I was telling Sir that you know we have high-speed internet in our houses, but look at the snacks that the kids are eating. So I want to stop you there, and I'll come back to you because there is a myth, and and Sid, maybe you can bust it for us. But there is a myth that women can only do uh, the softer products or the categories like you know fashion or whatever, and whether it's. Finance, or whether it's AI, uh, you know, hard, uh, you know, retail-driven FMCG company that somehow they can't handle the hard stuff. Yeah. You have, uh, you know, your company has funded several women-led startups. Right. Is this a myth or not? Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's funny that you said hard stuff because you, it's a very unusual <laughs> way of putting it. But we, uh, we're looking at a company right now founded by uh, uh, a lady who's into construction. Ooh. And it's, I can't tell you what the idea is because it's, you might steal it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's such a, and, and so she's explaining this to us um, the other day and we were quite excited about this idea. And then she's like, Sick, do you guys have any questions? And I was like, I, I don't even think I understand what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what to ask. <laughs> So okay. now I started reading up and trying to get reports just to understand what <laughs> it is. So I think and uh, I'm it's, so uh, happy to hear this from an investor, right? Because otherwise you walk into a room and the investors are always like, "Tell us this, tell us that, tell us this." Yeah. Yeah, actually, I'm very, I'm very fond of letting you know that I don't have that much knowledge about most <laughs> things. That but uh, yeah, I, I think um, you know, we invested in a company. Speaking of hard stuff, without being like uh, concrete, we invested in this company. Uh, six months, eight months ago, called um, uh, Inner Hour, which is uh, in the mental health space. And Neha, the founder there, um, she's not a she's not a psychologist, but um, the story is so similar. She's just gone through so many things and and and, and trauma in her life and gone. Th so she's created this out of her own understanding and her own way. And and so. I, I, I absolutely don't think that any male or female is, 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 is uh, you know, you're, you're, you're doing what, you know, your experiences have created for you. Right. Um, Lizzie's doing what her experience is. This is not her first rodeo, yeah, <laughs> in, in Indian finance. <laughs> uh, so I think there's so much learning that comes yeah. out in, in your own experiences. And this, the lady in the construction, she's been doing construction. And only her understanding of what she did is brought her into finding that lacune and kind of bringing that out. So at Wikibanking, Anjali, uh, you decided to actually set up an accelerator program to try and create a funnel for a lot of female founders out there. What, what led you to come to that decision that this was something that was required, that needed to be done? Was it something that you were hearing? At, you know, was there a lot of demand for it or did you just want to see uh, you know, what was out there? So I've been a career banker and uh, about and you know worked a lot in the gender space. So almost for the last 15 years, uh, worked a lot in gender equality, women leadership, and all of that. Uh, and so uh, it's very distressing to hear that you know anyone thinks women are not in the hard things, so to speak, because she they're everywhere. I'm going to get quoted. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying you keep looking at me, yeah. but she, yeah. she's the one who said that. Yes. And so last year when Wiki Banking actually asked me. Uh, Wiki Banking asked me to be the you know, national president for their banking council. Uh, I thought, what do we want to do? Because there is enough going on for gender. So let me think of only financial services. And what do women need? We created three pillars. 
There is investment advice. Mona leads that, in fact, for us. And so we've done a bunch of webinars. We have partners who help women how to invest their money. And women are unfortunately poorer at it than men and start much later in life than they should. And I'm a prime example of that being a banker myself. I think it was my mid-30s by the time I started intelligently investing my money. And now when I look back, I think, oh my God, how stupid I am. My 23-year-old son today is smarter than how I invested my money for the longest time. And the second pillar we did was lending. We wanted to let every woman know how can you, uh, you know, approach loans, where can you get money, what's in it for you, what are all the schemes running in the you know, country, be the platform. We've had lending papers published, it's you know, out there in the press, in the media. And the third pillar was funding, because the one thing that really is the need of the hour, not just for women, I think overall, India is the biggest startup hub in the world after uh, the Silicon Valley and Israel. We are the third largest startup country, and I think there were um, 30 unicorns this year. Yep. Yeah. That's the number, and that is an amazing number for our country. So there are lots and lots of women entrepreneurs. I'm a member, uh, a mentor at Thai and thought, what should we do here? So what we've done is we've devised a program with HSBC as our partner, and we decided to help women entrepreneurs understand the journey and what they need to do, and finally reach a point to get invest, you know, funding. Mm -hmm. We thought we're gonna do this pro bono. We wanna get 40, 50 women, hopefully we'll get some applications. We got 551 wow. applications, wow. and we had to struggle yeah. to actually choose the top 30. Okay, and what now, fields were they in? They're, they're, they're from every field, they're That's all amazing. over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, wow. yeah, yeah. you know, healthcare, health tech, financial yeah. services, so they are everywhere. And now we're at the last part of it. So now I have, you know, all these entrepreneurs that have one single need, funding. How do we help them get funding? And so what I was thinking is, let's start creating now an angel investor network of women because there is the India angel investment sector, it's about 96% men, I think. Yeah. Men are smarter at it, men are more you know, in it today. So I know enough women who have the ability to invest today. It's also a wealth creation lever, right? Sid would know that, yeah. for sure. So he can eventually. tell you more eventually. <laughs> yeah, you've got to, you know. Long term. Yeah. Okay. okay, but so, this is important, this is important. Yeah. Um, you know, I want everyone to understand the difference between angel investing and venture investing because a lot of founders, um, you know, these days they read in the papers that everyone's getting X amount of valuation and X amount of funding and everyone's got famous and, you know, they're just imagining that all these people came up with an idea, two years later got funded and are driving a Lamborghini, right? This is, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I want to first help everyone understand and, and we're going on record here so it, you know I, I, totally. you know a lot of people will will gain from this what is the difference between angel funding and what should one go look at when they're going for venture capital so Sid, do you want to take that first like why why or at what stage should a company come to a firm like lightbox so lightbox i think every firm is different yeah and so i think first your decision is whether you actually want to take someone's money um, that's not like a friend or, or a family member. If you take someone's money, the person's giving you money to make money. Um, and, and that becomes even more so if you go to an angel network or whatever where people are not, have nothing to do with you and are making decisions very, very quickly on whether to give you money. So, uh, and, and that's important to remember only because when, when you take someone's money and they expect you to make money, you have to go in a certain direction. Unless you've come up with a way to have that conversation with that person, and as you go up this totem pole of raising money, they are less and less and less and less interested in you. Because we all have to make a living. As much as I'm like, oh my God, I love your idea. Oh my God, yeah, we want to put money. Oh my God, I'm still, I want you to make money for me. And, and, and so I think, the first step is to realize that you're gonna to have to run your business in a certain way as soon as you take that one dollar, one rupee from anyone who you don't know. Um, an angel is gonna give you probably, and it keeps changing, but smaller amounts of money. Um, it's becoming a lot more structured in India, but you have to also remember they do this for a living and you don't. 
no matter what. You're mostly going to be a first time entrepreneur or maybe a second time entrepreneur. First time you don't know what anything is and so most people that give you money know how to give money and take whatever they want in return. And venture capital is maybe slightly more um, structured and uh, some more money. Uh, growth funds are more money and so uh, Lizzie might have gone to an angel and we, we talk, I'm an idiot, then we give her, <laughs> then, but with, with 50 million dollars probably won't come from a venture fund in India, so you know, you'll either, you'll go to a growth fund, they'll take more money. Honestly, I feel the more money you take, um, and I'm finding now as well, the, le the less of a devil they are, um, they're actually, they're ready to sign anything. Um, and, and, and the closer you are to the ground, and so the first money you take, those guys take a lot. They take a lot of equity, they take a lot of terms from you, and they kind of handcuff you a whole lot more. And so I think that's a, that's a very big difference. And people don't realize it's a two-way communication. It's almost like when you're doing that, you're, you're submissive. So, you know, you're like, okay, I'll sign anything. Okay, I don't need to know who you are. As long as you know who I am, no, that's the, that's the worst thing you can do. This is, you're getting into a relationship, you gotta know who this person is. You do not agree with everything. You have to learn what the documentation is. Your job is no longer just your company. Your job is also the documentation, the law, financial terms, you, what you're signing. All of that is what entrepreneurship unfortunately becomes when you are a founder. So, um, okay. uh, I, I think uh, that's, that, that's an important part of it. Did I go too far? Now? No, no, I, I, th I think you lost them at pets, but no, Shilmona's clapping. So. <laughs> no, I think it's really important. And I think that the way you described it just shows, you know, that it's, it's clearly a big resounding issue that's constantly coming up. And I, I yeah. can hear Lizzie also nodding in agreement. So Lizzie, share, yeah. share your perspective on this because yeah. You know, echoing what, what Sid said, a lot of founders at the early stages do give in because mm. there, how do you, there's always yeah. that toss up between how do I grow until and unless I get someone to come in. Yeah, yeah. I want to follow on from what Sid's saying. An advice that I wish someone had rammed down my throat in the early days, which is be really careful about who you take money from. They have such a big effect on your life from then on that if you just have a bad feeling about it, don't go there. And I'll tell you my devil story. <laughs> There's a guy in Mumbai and obviously that this is, you know, Chatham House Rules, I won't name him, but yeah. he loves to invest in female founded businesses. And he invited us to his man cave and wanted to basically take 51% of our company oh. <laughs> in return wow. for all his, you know, mentoring and help. But we were sitting there and we just knew this was wrong. Like there was just a very strong gut feel and we didn't take his money and he hounded us for weeks after that, it was very awkward. His wife would call me up, which was horrible. Wow. But we know a couple of women who did and they, they basically, I mean, these businesses don't exist yeah. anymore. He, he did such a bad job of, of you know, helping them. Um, and so we've always been so conscious about who we bring into our company and we've made a couple of mistakes maybe, but mostly it's been a really amazing experience because I'm really, really, Especially as a woman founder, you have to listen to your gut. And if you get a sense that there is a level of cynicism or disrespect, even in the first meeting, um, one thing I really encourage women to look for is, do they ask you defensive questions or optimistic questions? If they're asking you in the first meeting, what about competition? What about pricing going down? Yeah. They wouldn't ask a guy that. They're doing it because they think that you haven't thought yeah. of all the challenges in the business. That's probably not gonna work out. Like, that's not gonna work out. If he's asking you in the first meeting, how big could this be? Yeah. Like, what's the scale of your ambition? Then that's probably somebody that you can align with. And so the best investor relationships yeah. I have are ones where almost immediately I could tell that they got it and that they could see this huge opportunity um, and then there'd be massive supports along the way. Uh, but you, you have your funny moments. I have one Argentinian investor and he calls me up regularly and says, woman up. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> okay, Hannah, what was your experience with investors? Um, so I would say that in, in that sense, uh, very, very 
fortunate that it was more inbound and I do understand that that might not be the standard but one, one thing I would say that it's unfair to call investors or angels devil right I mean they are also doing their job they're taking money from LPs and yeah. they have to give returns to them so I would say the owners are probably more facetious but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just trying to help uh, no, thank you very much <laughs> You know, you should you should understand your responsibility as a founder, and I, I completely agree with you that you know, if you have options, then uh, maybe go and talk to other founders and ask them how was your relationship with the investor. You know, whether whether they were pressurizing you, did they give you the freedom? And it's the responsibility of the founder. It's yeah. not the investor's responsibility to make you feel comfortable. And if they are asking the questions, it's your job to convince them. You know, as a CEO yeah. and co-founder, one third of my job is fundraising. And I need to learn uh, how to do that. Um, and I've been completely like echoing her point that capital is not everything. You cannot solve every problem by just throwing money at it. So you need to bring absolutely the right people who can guide you. Like for example, our first seed fund, we had amazing like angel investor like Vijay Shikha Sharma as an investor, Matrix. And then because we are in consumer, we wanted to bring in a consumer fund as well. So very, very, you know, thinking about who can help us on this journey just beyond the capital. Okay. So Anjali, at Wiki Banking, you do provide all the tools, mentorship, like Sid was talking about. On the funding, on the funding part of it, um, angel investors, do they kind of just contribute but are silent? Do they help in terms of mentorship? Is it, how does it work? Right now we're just building that, we're starting that and we've got, you know, a, a group of women. Again, I will, I'm starting with 15, 20 and building from there. Uh, starting with only women and then getting the men in actually as advisors because I think men are just more mature in that journey. But we have run the all program, right? The yeah. Accelerating Women Entrepreneurs. Yeah. That's where all of this happened. So everything you've said is exactly what we help women entrepreneurs understand, right? How do you build your financial business case? How should you evaluate an investor? How should you manage your image? What kind of questions do you know, expect? We've had founder speaks and all of those, you know, 30 women have mentors. Okay. So that's happening through that, but through the angel investor network, it's going to be more like Sid described, it is going to be a business relationship. We're going to become the platform to connect. Here are, we think, you know, women entrepreneurs who need funding, who have very, very valid enterprises they're running, and here are women who want to be able to become investors. Some of them that we're bringing to the table might be first-time investors. So there's actually education on that side as well, right? Because yeah. they aren't like, like I think yeah. Sid described it very well, there are many stages. And so your first stage always as an entrepreneur is family and friends round, yeah. right? So I think what we're gonna create is gonna literally be that first rung and then we will mature it to become proper angel investing, helping them as well. Yeah. There are some women who understand that space and there are some women who want to invest money and say, you know, uh, Anjali or, you know, Wiki Banking help us to understand how we can. And it's a platform, so it's a win-win, right? At the end of the day, hopefully, the entrepreneur gets what they're looking for and the investor does get something out of it, to be fair. So, how many of you would be uncomfortable in reaching out to family or friends if you started something? How many of you would have a problem picking up the phone and asking, saying, I'm doing this, why don't you put in five lakhs, 10 lakhs? Any, not comfortable, no. Okay, who, <laughs> and who would be comfortable? Or Mona, <laughs> one or two, <laughs> very meek hands like <laughs> Okay, but this, okay, so you've seen this before, I can see, I can well, see. You've done it, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a second time entrepreneur, Lightbox is my second venture. Mm -hmm. um, I started my first company when I was, uh, in, in 2000. Um, they, uh, there was no venture community in India. Uh, my first round, my first round, my dad gave me $10,000 to go buy plane tickets to go funding, to go find funding. So I guess that was my first round. Yeah. It was at a $1 billion, so yeah. he got nothing. He got nothing. Um, and I, I, I raised money from the Singapore government sovereign fund at the time in 2000, at the, at the beginning of 2001. Um, but my first round was my father. We started Lightbox, uh, my, my, my best friend from high school and I started Lightbox. We got together in tw uh, 2010. I sold my company to NIIT in 2008 and uh, 
I, ne I, was, I was 30, I, I didn't know, I couldn't work in large, com I, I never worked in a large company, that didn't last very well. And so, <laughs> and if Bunsel was here, she's not. But the reason that my, <laughs> she was the first person I went to to figure out what to do in life. So she's the reason I'm here, I think, uh, in some level. I tell she, that story very differently, very meanly when she's around. So. Okay. She might come in a bit late. But, um, yeah. but that, when, we, when we first started Lightbox, we, we went back. We took our first check was from us groveling to people that are our friends, saying, will you please give us money? And 99% of them will like, be, you know, listen to you, like, oh, really good idea, damn good, yeah, we'll be in touch about it. And you know, it's embarrassing sometimes because you're just like, but you, you know, woman up. <laughs> okay, that's up and you, you kind of go to the next one. Of course, yeah. So I, as someone who's never raised money at all, but is extremely interested, um, are you better off taking a lot of money from a few people or are you better off taking a little money from a lot of people, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Little from many or like uh, spread your back. more spread. from few? Yeah. And two, how important is it that the person who's lending you the money is also able to add some value to your business? So do you want him to be part of it or do you not what are you better off? Because as you explained, the devil relationship, right? It's a bit sounds to me a like devil. a bit of a witch hunt. So do you want them as an older dude? Are you better off not having them? I'm rebranding you know I mean? investors. Like, uh, so first of all, they're not lending you money. Right. You'll get that out of your they're, mind. They're, 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 they're investing in They're in investing. Right. They're not you know, they're not they're not looking for their money back. They're looking for lots of money back. That's the difference, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm sure everyone will have a different opinion. Personally, um, I would prefer a smaller number of people um, giving you money. Um, you had a really interesting next question. What was your how last question? Oh, how involved, how involved should they be? So, you know, it's this involvement is a double-edged sword. Yes. Exactly. Um, and it's human nature to, if you, know, you give power to someone, you have to be a very mature Buddha not to take advantage of that power and then think yourself to be more than you are. And if many people are giving you power, like I made many angel investments, like I bought many cars or bought many watches or something, and I'm getting power from many different places, yeah, yeah. then I'm all of a sudden I've elevated myself. And I'm much greater than I actually am, but I believe it. And so you have to be very careful about wanting, um, wanting uh, support and where you want support. I, I, I do this for a living. Um, and I still, and I, we've invested in jewelry and furniture and food. I, I don't know anything about jewelry, furniture, food. I've invested for many, many years now. And I have very few companies in my portfolio, and yet I know very little. So now for me to dig into and say, how have you made this furniture? This leg is not looking okay. Uh, that's not going to help you. Right. you but know, it's you very know, possible exactly. that I'll do it. And then you have to sit there and listen Most also. Times the founders don't want the nuisance value that comes with the money. So you have to decide what support. You have to know what support you want. You have to drive the relation. Most yeah. people don't drive their relationship with their investor. Mm. They let the investor drive the relationship with them. Yeah. The big yeah, thing is for you to control That's the really relation. It's That's your right. relationship to decide yeah. what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. I think it depends on, and I was having this call with an investor and he was asking me, you know, the wrong question is what's the frequency or uh, how, like how frequently you are reviewing. But there are certain value which you know that, okay, this investor can help me with this thing. So the way I look at my cap table and I know if I have hiring related problem, I'm going to go to this person and just get a guidance on that. If I have XYZ related problem that I'm going to go and have like a chat because sometimes you come up with ideas it's always good to like bounce off so it depends on you and I, and the other thing I would say that you know the worst thing is generalized answer this is the right thing to do this is the right approach uh, just figure out your own own path I mean it could be your own frequency with the investors it could be your own relationship with the investors but I do believe they can add a, a lot more value of course you're not gonna ask them can you problem solve for me but more strategic questions, if you want to engage with them, there could be a value add. Yeah, it's really also, interesting. Yeah. I was just going to say, like when you go to the top end of it, for example, like a Bain Capital, right? When or a Lightbox. Bain, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. And, and like I'm that. sitting right here. When, I still when, like When Bain they Bain do Bain. invest and they say, you know, they, they almost pick up 20, 30% of a company's yeah. equity and a very big equity number, right? They become, like, like you said, they become your strategic advisors and yeah. partners. Yeah. And that's sort of a, a good thing that's to a good have, thing. right? 
But so you've got to figure out who that investor is and what role they can play for you. And at sometimes I think it's a very good role they can play for you. So it's worth it. Yeah. But tell me, you know, we're talking a lot about what questions you can ask investors and, you, you know, I think that a lot of people were, it, it's good to hear this, but I think a lot of people are still very hesitant to go out there and ask these questions. Secondly, I think it's very intimidating because when you're new to the game, yeah. right, and you're actually going in there, they're coming at you with all the questions, yes. you know. So at yes. that time, how do you how do you kind of retain confidence in your product? Because very often they kind of find all the fault lines possible. Maybe they're testing your confidence. Maybe they're genuinely trying to find value, right? Yeah. I yeah. want to say something, Abha. Mm. It's like that first investment, the, the lower rung investment that happens, angel investing as it's called, that is usually done more in the person, yes. right? The product is important, but that person is paramount. So these right. questions are happening because they're investing in you. They're looking yeah. at you and saying, yeah. do I have faith in her? So that's why those questions and how you can approach them and answer them and say, I've got everything it takes. The product, you know, here, here's how VC funding works. I'm just gonna take a minute more. You're able to create, a, uh, you have an idea, you're able to create something and you run it without really savvy technology or funding, but you've run it and it's already sort of making some waves. A VC will come along and look at it and say, wow, look at this. Imagine if I funded it with technology mm. and marketing savviness, what could this person go to? Because you've already created that. I had the ability to do this. So yeah. being who you are and being able to instill credibility of not just your product, but yourself is very, very important at the starting stage of, of any funding. That's amazing because I was sorry, sorry yep. if anyone thinks I was uh -huh. asking all the uh, I actually want to ask, when's a good time to go for funding? Is it for you go in the early, very early years? Because they anyway uh, putting their faith in you as a person, right? It's, it's, so it depends. And I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have a point of view, but there's many points of view. I have a point of view about where you really get the big, you know, bang for the buck is when you've taken your idea and you've already started making it work. It's already started doing something. So like when I'm a mentor on Thai and the you know entrepreneurs come and pitch, they're already out there. Like I'm going to give an example. There's this young woman who runs Chaika. It's a, it's a tea mix brand, right? She pitched to us. She sort of already created something. It's already on Amazon and it's already being bought. So imagine the kind of stuff that you know that the young woman can do as she goes forward. But that's my view. Can I be contrarian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely. Disagree. Yeah. I think that as women, we always think like, I have to keep proving myself, I have to keep, you know, I have to show more metrics, yeah. I have to show more proof of concept. Um, we raise five million dollars with one PDF, like with a with one one slide. With, with wow. nothing. nothing no team, no line of credit. We hadn't started a company in India. Nothing. Nothing. But we were so sure of what we were doing and we were so sure we needed a lot of capital to build it. And we were really, really open about that. We were like, we're not even gonna get out of bed until we have, you know, millions of dollars because this is such a huge opportunity, we don't want to miss it. And actually the early investors really respected that. They were wow. like, wow, they're really ambitious. Like, you know, they're not coming in here thinking they're gonna build a cottage business. And I do think as women we have to there is a perception when when especially we we're two women founders we didn't have a guy at that point and when you walk into the room they're like you know is it going to be lipstick is oh it going to be God. baby care and the minute you're like i'm going to transform financial services in india they're like whoa okay that's what i yeah exactly that's what we're like, all right. yeah. exactly and that's kind of what they want to see but it depends on what you're building so i know that it, it's it's very dependent on yeah, the course. industry yeah, but i'd also say it depends on your stage of life and your confidence in what you're building like we were so sure and I think if we were like 21 yeah. and then, you know, fresh off the boat, we wouldn't have had that sure, you know, confidence. So it really depends. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think we did the exact same thing. We just on a piece of paper raised more than a million dollar in the seed round. And I completely, I couldn't agree more that as women, yeah. we, what we really need to tell women is dream big. That yeah. is the only problem and show them examples. That is the only thing we need yeah. to tell them. But you know, I. I I want to know what worked for you because I know one or two other other female founders in that space uh, who did the round of investors and who turned around and told them that I mean either they were kind of dismissive to begin with because they knew that they were female founders with children uh, right and like I don't know are they serious you know etc uh, secondly uh, and this is a running business 
So they'd already started. They raised uh, an early round of about, I think, uh, three crores uh, that they raised. And so they'd already started and manufacturing product. Any of the bigger investors were like, we don't have faith in FMCG or D to, you know, D to C. We, we, yeah. we don't, we don't have, have faith in it. So what worked for you, Hana? Because it can really help other women. I think two things, and this goes back to your previous question, yeah. Abba, as well, that what do you need? I think you need first conviction, very strong yeah. conviction. You were saying when investors are questioning you, yeah. you will get 10 different ideas from 10 different investors. And if you are swinging, then you're not going to able to build a business. You need to have a very strong point of view. Of course, you need to be a good listener, but have a very strong conviction. But what if you're not being able to show them the growth as fast as they want to see it? So, okay, so that coming back to that, you know, it's again your responsibility. I mean, okay. if they are giving you money, you are taking venture capital, so you are making a promise that I'm going to give you like 10 extra return. And it's your, it's my fiduciary duty to ensure that my investors are getting that return. So A, I would say conviction and persistence. Like you're absolutely right. You might not be able to grow. And if you are afraid and scared of hearing no's, it could be because they are like they might be questioning you being a mother they might be questioning maybe you being a father but please have a thick skin whether you are a female or a male you will have to hear oh, yeah. no and i think going back to sit's point as well you know why when you're solving a personal problem uh, becomes helpful on this journey because there definitely will be ups and downs and during those down when you when investors are questioning you maybe you're not able to grow you just have to do the problem solving. You have to be at it. The, for me as a founder, the biggest switch was when there is a situation, I used to always worry, oh my God, this happened. Yeah. Now I said, okay, this has happened. How can I solve it? It's such an, like it's, it seems like such an easy thing, right? But if you start practicing it, it is the biggest unlock that I've learned. How do you react to a certain situation? You need to be a fighter. You need to, you need to have that confidence and conviction in you that I will make that happen. It's as little as possible. Like, <laughs> how, how, how well you can negotiate? But it's totally negotiated. It's, it's yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, uh, it's art. You can paint. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll clap again. I think that's amazing. And we have so many stories like that within our network. You know, we also have uh, individual achievers in their own rights. So everyone doesn't have to feel intimidated and feel like they have to suddenly go out there and raise millions. But the fact is that those that wanted to have. And I think that's the whole point. You know, we have a real diverse mix of members, as you can see here as well on the on the panel. Everyone from different industries, you know, Kanchan, Vidya, Pallavi, Pooja. Like everyone's doing different things and are excited about what they do. And I think that's that's really what's important. But coming back to Expresso, we're here, we're building this platform. So if you're a female founder, or if you're a female investor, <laughs> uh, you know you know where to come. And uh, we're going to be having this uh, meetup quarterly. And um, you know we're going to have a mix of founders and investors to come in. And you know that's your opportunity to come and meet them, as well as share your story and raise some important questions. We're going to be doing this in both Delhi and Mumbai uh, every quarter. So thank you all so much. I hope we thank covered you. more or less everything. The great thing about this ecosystem is participation. I want to participate. Others want to come. They want to tell their stories. They want to help. You should come so you can hear if you want. But the excuse for not doing something cannot be that I don't know how to do it. Not in this ecosystem. Here, everybody wants to help each other. No matter who you are, what you do, or where you want to go. So I look forward to more people wanting to come in small groups and larger groups, one-on-one, -on -one, just so that we can work together to get everyone going in the direction that they want, that first step. Hope to see you soon.